Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Happy Gaudete Sunday. For the first time in our history, yesterday, a Filipino journalist was awarded a Nobel Prize for Peace. You know, as I listened to her speech very early in the morning, I felt something lighting up inside me. It gave me that little glimpse of hope that Gaudete Sunday is about in this penitential season of Advent. Maria Ressa's speech echoed for me the words of the Apostle St. Paul in our second reading today. Rejoice in the Lord always. I say it again, rejoice. St. Paul is inviting the Philippians to replace their anxieties with a profound sense of peace. A peace, he says, which surpasses all understanding. You know, I find it very ironic that most advocates of peace in this world are people who have had to face a lot of odds and adversities, a lot of trouble and violence. Think, for example, of other Nobel Prize for Peace winners like Aung San Suu Kyi of Myanmar. She's back in jail again. Or the late Nelson Mandela of South Africa or Lech Valenza of Poland, or remember that, that girl Malala Yousafza, Yousafzai of Pakistan who had been subjected to so much violence. I did not really know how small Maria Ressa was physically until she stood next to the Russian journalist Dmitry Muratov, her fellow awardee of the Nobel Peace Prize. But in the eyes of the whole world, she stood tall as she challenged the people of this world with a question, what are you willing to sacrifice for truth? What are you willing to sacrifice for truth? Her question sounded to me like that of another courageous truth teller, si John the Baptist. When John the Baptist answered the people who came to him and asked what they should do in the midst of so much darkness and wickedness in society, John the Baptist appealed to the goodness that he believed was already in the hearts of people. His answers to the crowd, to the tax collectors, and to the soldiers in the gospel remind me of the words of another bold prophet, also a truth teller, the prophet Micah. Sabi ni prophet Micah, you have been told, O mortal, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. Only to do justice, to love goodness, and to walk humbly with your God. That is in Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Find the good that is already in you. Hanapin ang mabuti na nasa puso na ng tao. Kasi ang tao naman eh, likas na mabuti. Madalas niyo ako marinig, kahit ano pang masama, pwedeng magawa ng tao. Hinding-hindi natin ituturing na masama ang sino mang tao. Find the good that is already there in you. This is what John the Baptist was asking the people to do, to find the innate sense of generosity 
that moves you to share your food with the hungry. That inner sense of justice and compassion that restrains you from exploiting the weak and the vulnerable. That inner sense of truth that will make you hold the line against lies and falsehoods. Parang gusto kong i-quote directly yung most inspiring lines dun sa speech ni Maria Reza. Sabi niya, Our greatest need today is to transform that hate and violence, the toxic sludge that is coursing through our information ecosystem, spreading that hate and triggering the worst in us. Well, sabi niya, that only means we have to work harder. Magtrabaho naman tayo. We have to know what to do. We have to believe that there is good in the world. There is good in the world. Hinawakan ni Maria Reza sa isang t-shirt. The bold letters were printed in black, a black t-shirt. Pero ang nakasulat, believe that there is good in the world. Tapos naka-highlight, be the good. Well, this is the best of who we are, sabi niya. The part of our humanity that makes miracles happen. This is what we lose in a world of fear and violence. We can bring out the best of ourselves. Nandiyan na yan eh. Nilagay na ng Diyos sa kaluluwa natin. Both Maria Reza and Dmitry Muratov warned the world about the thick cloud of darkness that is enveloping the world, especially through the social media in this age of disinformation. Ngayon, hindi na nagbabasa ng periodiko yung tao. Social media na lang. Kasi nga naman, there is a lot of information there. But there is also a lot of disinformation there. And when people cannot distinguish between information and disinformation, ay nako, patay tayong mga bata tayo. How narratives founded on lies repeated a thousand times by armies of trolls through their myriads of fake accounts eventually take the place of truth. Yung ibang nagpe-Facebook, akala nila yung ibang binabasa nila ay eh, tunay na tao. Ay nako, mas marami ho yung fake accounts. They are paid some of them up to 80 to 100,000 a month. Walang ibang trabaho kundi magkalat ng kasinungalingan sa social media. Ulit-ulitin mo lang yun. A thousand, hundred thousand times. Magbabiral siya. And pag nag-viral, akala ng tao, totoo. Well, they are succeeding. They are succeeding in shaping the public opinion. And they are destroying democracies all over the world. And there is no way you can stop them, sabi ni Maria Reza, except by stubbornly holding the line. Ang lakas ng loob niya, no? To really call a spade a spade. Every now and then, talaga namang nagpapalagdala ang Diyos sa atin ng mga taong magpaparano sa atin ng Gaudete. We all need that Gaudete experience. I call them the little sparks of light that give us a glimpse of hope in the midst of so much darkness. Kasi kung doon ka lang sa darkness titingin, madidepress ka talaga eh. 
many of these glimpses of light or hope did not even live to see the realization of what they stood for, what they fought for, what they hoped for. Isipin nyo na lang, si Moses, for example, he worked for the liberation of the Israelite people from slavery in Egypt. He led them through the desert. Forty years, pinamunuan niya itong bayang ito sa paglalakbay sa disyerto. Pero siya ba nakapasok sa promised land? Hindi. He only saw a glimpse of it from far away and died. O isipin ninyo ang ating bayaning si Jose Rizal. He dedicated his whole life for the freedom of our country from the Spanish colonial rule. And yet, he never experienced the time when our country finally enjoyed freedom and democracy. Ay, nako, yung kalayaan at demokrasya niyan, pinagbuwisan niya ng dugo ng maraming bayani natin. Tapos itatapon lang natin overnight? How could we allow that? This is very much like the story of an old man who was planting daw a mango seedling. Minsan, isang araw, may isang matanda nagtatanim ng isang puno ng mangga. Seedling, malit pa lang. Tinawanan daw siya ng neighbor. Ang sabi ng kapitbahay, What's the use of planting that tree when you won't even be able to taste its fruits? Para kit nagtatanim ka ng mangga na hindi mo na matitikman ang bunga niya. You will be dead by the time the mango, mango tree will begin to bear fruit. Patay ka na. Pag nagsimulang magbunga yan. Ngumiti lang daw yung matanda at ang sabi niya, ay nako iho, hindi problema yan. It's no problem at all. Even if I don't taste the fruits of this mango tree. Ang sabi niya, ako din mismo eh, I have eaten a lot of fruits in my life na hindi naman ako mismo ang nagtanim. Ang dami na nating pinakinabangan sa buhay na hindi naman tayo ang nagpunyagi. We only tasted the fruit. Kaya ang sabi niya, it is enough satisfaction for me to know that I have planted it for the next generation to enjoy. Mga kapatid, that's what Gaudete is about. Gaudete is that Sunday in the penitential season of Advent when the dark color of purple lightens up into the rosy color of dawn. The rosy color of dawn. It is a glimpse of the future in the present and a resolve to work for its realization for the sake of your children and your grandchildren, for the sake of the future generation. Huwag naman tayong mag-isip ng sarili lang natin. Isipin din natin ang susunod na henerasyon ng Pilipino. When I was much younger, I used to dabble in the art of photography. Mahilig ako mag-picture taking. That was of course decades before the age of digital technology, when photographers still used rolls of films and had to have them developed in a Photoshop. Yung iba sa inyo, dinatnan pa yung panahon na yan. Yung mga bata, hindi na nila alam yan. Ang alam nilang camera, cellphone. Kuha lang ng kuha. Hindi na kailangan bumili ng film. Ay, hindi po ganyan nung bata kami. Minsan, kulang pa yung pera mo. Good for 12 shots lang. Kaya tipid na tipid. Hindi ka basta kukuha ng kukuha. Iko-compose mo siya talaga mabuti. That is the art of it. At alam nyo, favorite subject kong kunan, 
sunrise, at sunset. Kaya lang, I always felt disappointed whenever I showed my photographs to my friends who could not distinguish one from the other. Kung minsan, magpapakita ako ng sunrise, sasabi nilang, ay, ang gandang sunset. O kung minsan, magpapakita ako ng sunset, sasabi nilang, ay, ang galing naman ng sunrise na yan. Ba't pa kaya nalilito ang tao? They mistake the sunset for the sunrise. For the sunrise, for the sunset. Well, I don't blame them. Kasi, sa totoo lang, mukhang pareho lang naman talaga. In both instances, you see a dynamic tension between light and darkness. Ang tawag dito sa Tagalog, agaw dilim. Hindi pa talaga lubos na madilim, hindi pa lubos na maliwanag, nag-aagaw dilim. And yet we all know, there is a whole world of a difference between the two. Yung dapit hapon, that is the light, when the light gives way to the darkness. Naglalaban ng liwanag at dilim, pero kadiliman ang nananalo. Pero sa bukang liwayway, naglalaban ng liwanag at dilim, ngunit ang nananalo ay ang liwanag. That's Gaudete. The light that gives us the patience to wait in joyful hope, that is what we celebrate on Gaudete Sunday. And that light for us is the divinity shining out in the humanity of Jesus Christ, which is a work in progress in each one of us. It is what John the Baptist prepared for. It is what he pointed to. It is what his father, Zechariah, sang about. Every day, every morning, sa morning prayer, in the liturgy of the hours, we recite Zechariah's canticle. And you know, yung Zechariah's canticle na yon? He recited it while holding the baby, John the Baptist, yung anak niya, in his hands. And he made a prophecy. Sabi niya, through the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Brothers and sisters, let us be that spark of light. Gaudete is about the good that is already in us. It is God's work in progress. And we hope we don't get tired working for its realization if, even if we do not immediately see the fruits of what we plant.